Hi everybody, in this video we are going to use the line data structure to create a chromatic scale. Now really what I wanted to do in this video is just do a quick introduction to this data structure called a line, but I figured we should do something with it, so we're going to make a chromatic scale. Now if we look in the documentation here, we have the line, so it basically is going to create a ring that gives us a starting value and a finishing value and it is just going to create a ring of certain increments between the start value and the finish value and it says it defaults to four so if I give a starting number and an ending number it's going to give me four numbers uh, from start to finish and kind of break those up evenly. Um, and there's some options we can add in here, but if we look at the example, if we do line 0 to 4, uh, and it will give us from an uh, even distribution from 0 to 4. Uh, and you notice it doesn't start at 4, so I'm going to just kind of get into all that right here in this demonstration. So I'm going to first just create a variable called L that's going to hold this data structure. So I do line and then I'm going to create one from 0 to 8 and then I'm just going to put L so we can look at this. So here I can get away with just my start value and my finish value. Now if I hit return see here in the console we get a ring from 0 to 4, 6 so it defaults to four values in here or what we'll refer to as steps, four steps. So if I say I want to start at 0 and I want to end at 8 a line is going to create an even distribution of each value from one to the next. So it goes 0, 2, 4, 6. So for example, if I were to do uh, from 0 to 100, it's going to be 0, 25, 50, 75 as it's making four steps. Okay. Um, now they're going to go back to 8 here. So our first option is to change the number of increments by using this steps option here. So for example, I could make 8. So instead of 4 increments between 0 and 8, it's going to give me 8 increments. And then we should expect to see it go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And there we have it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now you might notice that the end value we provided was 8. However, the output we get, the ring, the last value we see is 7. So the reason is, if you think about it, between 0 and 7 we have 8 steps. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is 8 values in there, which we can consider to be steps. Now there is an, another option we have, which is the inclusive option. Inclusive. There we go. And this defaults to false, which means... So what inclusive means is, should we include the last value, the end value... Uh, in our ring and it's going to default to false so if you don't want to include that so for example if you wanted for example uh, between 0 and 8 but not to actually end at 8 and that could be useful for maybe if you're trying to uh, iterate through an array index or something like that that could be uh, a use for line but uh, in general, if you don't want it, you don't need to use the inclusive uh, option because it's going to default to false. But let's say I do want that 8 there. okay? Um, so I would just do inclusive true, and then the output is going to include 8. But we're going to see another sort of weird thing happen here, which is you'll see that now I don't get the clean number that uh, of all sort of whole numbers there. I have zero and then I have all these weird decimal points and the reason is is in order to create an even distribution between zero and eight if I have eight steps and I want to end at eight uh, I need to have these weird decimal places here. So here is value one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then I end on eight. So if I wanted an even distribution of whole numbers between 0 and 8. I would actually need to include 9 steps if I want it to be including that 8. 
And so there I have one, two, but here is I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values in that case, because I have nine steps. So for example, I could do this and one through eight, I would get that. But just some things to be aware of. So if you want to include that last end value, you need to use the inclusive, but you also then need to kind of be aware of the number of steps that you are going to use. Okay, so um, that's the basic idea of how this line function works. And you can also just kind of go from low to high. Uh, so just to give you an example there. Uh, so here we start at 8 and work our way down, so it doesn't just have to be from a low number to a high number. Now, as I said, our aim, I'm just going to make a quick chromatic scale here. Now, obviously, I could just use the scale function and the chromatic uh, value of the scale function, but this is more just to show how we can uh, create sort of strings of values using this line data structure. Yeah. And so I'm going to start at 48, and I'm going to go to 60, and I'm going to do 13 steps here because I want to start at 48. I'm, I'm thinking of MIDI notes here just to as to why I'm choosing 48 to 60. So this would be from, I believe, C3 to C4 in terms of musical notes. And there are 12 notes. Uh, going through the chromatic scale, but I want to start on C and end on C, so which is why I'm choosing 13 steps, and I'm keeping the inclusive option as true because I want to end on 60. So now if I were to put that there, there you see I have a run of even values starting at 48 and going up one each time, that gets me to 60. So now if I want to play through this, uh, I'm going to... I could do 13 dot times. What I'm actually going to do is do L dot length dot times do. So this is maybe a better way if you want to iterate through a line. This will this L dot length will just take whatever the length of this data structure is, which will correspond to the number of steps that you chose. And so L dot length dot times will just iterate through however long this data structure is. And that's something you can do with any data structure too, not just a line. You could use it for a ring or an array or a knit or whatnot. So now I'm just going to do play L. Oop l dot tick and then let's just sleep for 0 0.5 and then if i run it you can see it just played through every value that was in that line data structure that i did starting at 48 and incrementing by one all the way up to 60 which gave me a c chromatic scale so that is the basics behind how to use a line data structure. I do intend to make some more videos showing some other ways that you can have fun with this line data structure, uh, specifically with like chopping up samples and stuff like that. So keep your eyes out for that and check those out. I'll try and link them in the video when they come up.